The Smithsonian Faculty Fellowship Program represents a rewarding academic professional development opportunity for faculty at Montgomery College. The fellowships are a product of a unique collaboration between Montgomery College and the Smithsonian Center for Learning and Digital Access. It's the first of its kind between the Smithsonian Institution and a community college. Raquel Licamelli holds an MA in English from Georgetown University where she also double majored in English and Spanish. Before joining the English and Reading Department at Montgomery College in 2015 as a part-time faculty member, Raquel worked in residence life at Georgetown University and was employed by Chiton Tutoring as an ACT, SAT, and Writing Instructor. Raquel teaches English 101 and English 102 on Montgomery College's Rockville campus and is an academic success coach for Achieving the Promise Academy. Dedicated to student success, she looks forward to rethinking her classroom and addressing students' academic needs through this fellowship experience. Um, I want to start off by saying when I first wrote my proposal for the Smithsonian Fellowship, I knew that I wanted to engage students with a theme that would span all of English 102's assignments. There's often a lot of resistance around writing courses, especially required ones, and so I wanted a cohesive theme that would engage students in a way that would call them to write, that would inspire them to write. Uh, and I saw this past year's Smithsonian Fellowship as an opportunity to do that. So I landed on this theme, Practicing Democracy, writing about protest and activism in US American society. And uh, given that this course culminates in an 8 to 10 page research paper, um, an argument research paper, I chose to focus on the fact that students are really trying to figure out how to participate in this democracy, how to shape it, how to protest the flaws that we see in it. And I wanted to capitalize on that because I could see how each essay required in an English 102 course could take up a piece of this dialogue, teach students the necessary critical thinking, reading, writing skills that they needed, the ability to research effectively and knowledgeably um, as, as they completed this course. So I knew that uh, one of the ways that we might all succeed together in this course is to sell students on the idea that they're going to be very connected to the Smithsonian Museums throughout the course. And so from day one, we started engaging with artifacts from the museum. Um, after, you know, we talked about the general theme of the course, we discussed the syllabus, students participated in an icebreaker in which they walked around the room and they looked at different images of artifacts that I had printed out from the Smithsonian Learning Lab. Uh, and I told all the students that I simply chose them based on a simple search query of democracy. And these are the images that it produced. So I asked them to think about the images. I asked them to choose one that they felt connected with in some way. Um, and I also asked them to think about what was missing from all these images as well. And so they went back to small groups. They talked about why they chose their image. This is just one example of one of the images that they could choose from. Uh, they talked about the connection they felt with it, and they also talked about what they thought was missing from all the images they saw. And I felt like this is a really organic way to introduce uh, our connection with the Smithsonian Museums and a way to talk about the <coughs> mandatory visit that we'd be doing halfway through the semester. So students before, so like I said, we went to the museum halfway through the semester. So before we went on our museum visit, we visited the National Museum of American History. They wrote two essays. There we go. Uh, so essay number one was a rhetorical analysis. And students read a letter from a Birmingham jail by Dr. King. And uh, you know, it, it allowed me to kind of teach those rhetorical um, the vocabulary of rhetorical analysis, of rhetorical appeals, and also continue to explore our theme around protest, around activism, and uh, again, connect uh, the students uh, with the different artifacts from the Smithsonian Museum. So as they prepared to write these essays, they also engaged in a low stakes writing and presentation um, in which they had to choose a quote from the letter analyze it, talk about what appeals that, that Dr. King used to effectively portray his message, and then they were allowed to search uh, unhindered in the Smithsonian Learning Lab, and they had to choose just some image that they felt this quote connected to. And so we got very literal 
connections with pictures of Dr. King speaking, with protests during the civil rights movement, but we also got some, some figurative um, connections as well. And so this one, uh, this is an example one of my students um, used uh, for her presentation. So she chose this quote, Yes, I see the church as the body of Christ, but oh, how we have blemished and scarred that through social neglect and through fear of being nonconformists. And so the analysis that she wrote and presented on was that this quote is following paragraphs of Martin Luther King describing his relationship with the church. He is using multiple rhetorical tools to further his point about disappointment with the way he has seen people of faith address racism. He uses ethos in a way because he is establishing his extensive history with religion before he makes criticism. And that makes his argument more believable. He is also appealing to pathos because his use of visual language emphasizes the damage enough to resonate with most people. And then she wrote about the image that she chose that you see on the left. I chose this picture because it shows the church looking ominous and not as inviting as you originally thought a church was, somewhat like what the quote is suggesting. So again, helping students see how relevant the artifacts that are housed in all of these Smithsonian museums at our fingertips fit into what we're doing as a class, the work that we're doing, the critical thinking, reading, writing that we're doing. They also then wrote a short argument synthesis essay, again exploring our themes. They took up the value of social media as a democratic tool of participation. And so we continued to synthesize the information, synthesize different readings with our own thoughts, uh, um, with our own experiences, with the conversations that were continuing in our classroom. And then we really started preparing for our visit. And in order to feel like the students were very prepared, I had them engage in two different exercises. One was an object-based learning workshop that, thanks to Sarah, gave us resources on. And so I had students that kind of walk through some exercises as a group so that when they went down to the museum, they really understood how to truly see some of the exhibits and the artifacts that they would encounter. So. Um, Object-based learning was kind of based on this idea of, of getting students to critically analyze what's in front of them through a see-think-wonder routine. So this is one of the images that we looked at as a class in our classroom, and students answered the questions like, what captures your attention when you look at this image, and what do you see? What do you think about that? And then what does it make you wonder? And we, they, they responded individually, then they went to small groups, and then we discussed as a whole. And then we talked about how we're seeing this on a screen right now, we're seeing the image of an artifact, but then we'll go down to the museum together in the next week and see it in person. And so I wanted, to, um, I wanted them to know that too, so because there's a difference between seeing it on a screen and seeing it in person. And then the other exercise that they completed before we went down on our museum visit is that uh, they worked on examining their entrance narrative to the museum. So they had some space, to, and it was part of a formal writing assignment, and this was part one of it. They had some space to really truly think about what their experiences with museums had been thus far, if they've had any at all, what they're hope, hoping to get out of our museum visit, what anxieties or maybe negative feelings they're having around it. I have to say, I didn't really have any student have truly negative feelings around it, but there were definitely some anxieties around it. So it gave them the space to write about it, me the space and time to address it before we actually went down to the museum. <clears throat> and so then we went down. I took two different groups. I took one on a Sunday afternoon, and then I took a larger group on a Tuesday morning. And uh, we spent two hours in the museum together. Uh, we visited the following exhibits at the National Museum of American History. American Democracy, A Great Leap of Faith, Many Voices, One Nation, and Writing a Wrong, Japanese Americans in World War II. Students had a packet of guiding questions to help them navigate all of these exhibits, but I also walked along with them, pointed things out to help them truly engage in the experience. And then at the end, they were left with some time to simply just explore. And their task during that time was to find some type of inspiration for the second half of our semester's work, which would be researching a specific issue that they felt passionate about that somehow connected to our theme. So some issue that our current day society is taking up uh, 
that students want to address through research and then propose solutions. They would eventually write a proposal argument based on this theme. And, and so they submitted, when, when we got back and when all said is done, they submitted these topic proposals and finished up their reflection. And I was really pleased at how they handled this assignment in the beginning of their kind of personal research journey in my class. Um, some sample research topics included immigration issues, gun violence, politicians' use of social media, and the U.S. role. U.S.'s role in nuclear warfare. And all of these issues started with some type of inspiration at the museum, some type of artifact that they chose and they wrote about in their reflection questions in the topic proposal. So just to conclude, I want to share some of those quotes taken from that reflection piece after we visited the museum and some, some photos of my students down there. And I think you'll, you'll see from some of the writing that they truly did value this experience. It really did change the way they engaged with our coursework and with the skills that I was ask, asking them to practice day in and day out because um, English 102 is a lot of work. It's a lot of work in class, but it's also a lot of work outside of class. And I felt like after this museum visit, it did reinvigorate them to really engage and, and do the best they could with the assignments as we moved through the semester. So one of my students wrote, after my visit at the Smithsonian Museum, I realized how much I enjoyed, ex enjoyed exploring the exhibits. The artifacts that they displayed were fascinating. It is amazing to see objects that were used in the past be displayed as a piece of history. It makes me wonder if everything I do make or touch could be a piece of history in a couple of decades. And I loved this because they felt connected to, to the history that we're creating in present day. I'm actually going to skip, just for time's sake, to the next quote. So the Greensboro protest and lunch counter experience in the Greensboro Four came up in a lot of our readings, um, kind of as a, a historical um, point. And so we talked about it a lot as a class. They actually ended up watching one of the documentaries on the Greensboro Four. So they were all very excited to see this counter when we finally went down to the museum. And I had one student write about it. I also found the Greensboro lunch counter to be very plain looking. But when I really thought about how the peaceful protest surrounded around this lunch counter in a way was the start for a push in getting African Americans the rights they deserved, which made myself think of the saying to never judge a book by its cover. Because as plain as this lunch counter is and looks, it's truly full of a huge part of American history. So again, kind of fighting that resistance that sometimes students and, and children have on those field trips that it's just stuff, right? It's just stuff. Uh, I'm saying, you know, they're inanimate objects. What does this have to do with me? And I loved how the student really owned that initial reaction and changed it into something very powerful. And then finally, so this is the paper mache model that we, we viewed as a class together during our object-based learning exercise. And so now my students are seeing it for the first time in person. And I'm just going to read you the bottom quote. But one student wrote, I was caught off guard when I saw how large the paper mache Statue of Liberty was in person. The statue was carried around for two weeks and for over 200 miles in a march for agricultural workers. It was a truly profound piece to see, and the size magnified the message it was intending to send. I also felt like I could relate to this piece because my family works in the agricultural business. I wondered how effective this statue really was in catching attention for the protests at the time. I wondered also if people understood the message of food and agriculturalists being a light source for our country, as this piece suggests, through the tomatoes replacing the light on her torch. And so there's a lot in that quote, but you can see the student writer mimicking some of the language from the class, the wondering, the, the effectiveness of the message that we talk about a lot. Uh, um, and really analyzing what's in front of them. And then finally, a lot of my students found inspiration in front of this exhibit in the, in the democracy, the larger democracy exhibit, because it was all of these different protest signs. And as they looked for an issue that really grabbed them, that they felt very passionate about, a lot of them went to these signs and saw a piece of them represented in them. And so one student wrote about this um, this particular 
these particular artifacts, these protest signs. One interesting thing I learned was that even way back in history in this nation, multiple arguments and protests occurred at once. They were not all just focused on addressing one issue at a time. We have the same system today. So again, you can see students trying to find their way in this current day society, in this current um, political landscape, and how they can engage in it. <clears throat> so to conclude, I just want to say that it's only with gratitude that my, um, on behalf of me, on behalf of my students for this wonderful experience. I think that not only did my students really um, really learn the skills that necessary to complete English 102, they did it in a way that felt relevant to them. And so I just thank the cohort, I thank Mimi and Denise, I thank Sarah and all of the Smithsonian staff for a wonderful experience. And then I reflect on kind of how last semester went and I continue to tweak assignments and make changes. I'm excited to bring down another group to the museum this spring. Thank you very much.